Welcome everyone to the February 26th uh, webinar here for the 2DCC. Today we have Dr. Sen Kwok Sam Lee. Sam, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Kerry. Uh, so, as I mentioned, I was talking about the manganese bismuth terrorite, as this is the first predicted uh, as an intrinsic antiferromagnetic topological insulator. So, I'll be talking about, uh, we'll discuss what is topological insulator first. So, consider you have a 2D electron gas system with a, a, blind, a very strong applied magnetic fields, and the electrons inside the 2D electron gas will be pinned down, okay, and then direct around the magnetic front. Okay, so this, uh, this cyclotron motion of the electrons made, made, the, uh, made the, uh, inside of the 2D electron gas become uh, insulated. So when, you, when we plot the dispersion relationship of this system, which is the energy as a function of mo momentum, we can have a gap in between the bulk conduction band and the bulk wire band. And this gap made the system become insulated. Okay, so however, at the edge state, the electrons will be bounced back by, by the boundary and stick in the one that in the one direction. Okay, move in the one direction by the Lorentz force and create and form a edge conduct a conduction channel. Okay, and this edge conduction channel will represent the red line in the in our dispersion relationship. Okay, in this system, you need to have a have an external applied magnetic field. Okay, to order in order to have this kind of system. So. Due to the presence of the magnetic field, okay, the time reversal symmetry is broken. Okay? In topological insulator, we can have a system where the time reversal symmetry is invalid. Okay? We prefer the time reversal symmetry. So as you can see now, the outspin of the electrons will move to the positive k directions and the negative uh, and the downspin will move to the negative k directions. Okay? And in the dispersion relationship, then you have a two conduction channel moving in different direction, okay? And this is realized in uh, quantum spin hall effect, which is uh, done in uh, uh, chromium, cadmium telelium, uh, in sandwiched by the mercury terrorite quantum web, okay? And this also known as the first topology, 2D topological insulator, okay? Without the magnet, uh, because of the strong speed operate coupling, we can have an insulator in between the bar, okay? So in 2006, a uh, theory it, uh, predicted that this 2D topological insulator can be extended to become a 3D topological insulator, okay? And the dispersion relationship can, uh, the Hamiltonian can be right as this form, okay? It's, a, it's, it's fulfilled the, uh, the Dirac formulation. So you should recall that the electron here is a Dirac electron. And right now today we have a different kind of topological 3D topological insulator, including the antimony terrorite, uh, <coughs> bismuth terrorite, bismuth terrorite. So those surface depth and the bulk band structure can be easily detected by the RFX measurements. Okay, so take the example of the bismuth terrorite. So in this RFX data, you can clearly see the bismuth, uh, the bulk conduction band and the bulk wellness band. Okay, and the upper Dirac cone and the bottom Dirac cone is connected by the Dirac cone. Okay, and here we can see that the zero is usually we refer as the Fermi level, the topmost surface of the electron C. So every day we use a we use electronic device, and you you found that your electronic device become hotter and hotter because of the long time using. This is due to the jaw heating effect. Okay, so in order to solve this problem, topological insulator might be one of the candidates. Okay, because it can can be used for the dispective last uh, smithsonian device, and more importantly, it also can be used for the quantum computer. In physics, especially in Maxwell equations, we can see that when the gradient of the magnetic electric field, we have we have some value. This indicates that we have a charge, point charge. Okay, uh, the monopole electron. However, in the gradient of the, of the magnetic field is zero. This tells us that we do not have the magnetic monopole and let the, let, uh, let the Maxwell equation become non-symmetric, okay? So this is why when you chop down or you break the, the magnets, you always get the dipole moment, regardless how small about your magnet, okay? So in this case, in, 
top particular, uh, top particular insulator, we hope uh, one of the effect, uh, one of the phenomena, okay, is is to detect the imaging magnetic <coughs> monopole. Okay, what you do is uh, the theory predicted that, that when you put a charge near to the topological surface, that due to the topological magnetic electric effect, you can generate the image of the magnetic monopole. Okay, then you can map the mass rate equation becomes symmetric. And we are not only interested on the magnetic monopole, another fan of uh, assorting physics we want to realize is about quantum Amnus Hall effect. So in this, in the quantum Hall effect, you need to have a very high man external magnetic field. Okay, then you have, and there's the, uh, the conduction, the resistivity value become quantized, means H over E squared. Okay, it's, uh, it's a quantized value of the resistivity. Okay, in this case, uh, H over E squared is about 2.5, if I not remember wrong, is 2.58 kilo ohms. Okay, so in Amos Hall effect, you also can be quantized the ma measurements, uh, the value. Okay, right now, as you can see here, the, what we expect is the whole receptivity is equal to H over E squared when, uh, when the system without the magnetic field, the presence of the external magnetic field, but we utilize the magnetization of the system. Okay, this is the beautiful of the of the quantum Amnus Hall effect. And however, there is a two requ three requirements in order to realize the quantum Amnus Hall effect. The first one, you need to have the magnetic magnetic inside your system. Okay, if you have a magnetic introduced in your system, then you add a extra term. Okay, the m sigma z. Okay, the z means the magnetic magnetization must polarize in the z direction, and in this term. We open, uh, we break the tie reversal symmetry, and open the gap between the upper upper direct coil and the bottom direct coil. Okay, we not only need the magnetic inside our topological insulator, we also need another another important ingredient, where the Fermi level must be tuned into the surface that gap. Okay, if you did not tune the the energy, uh, the Fermi level on all the co chemical potential level into this gap, let's say you somewhere on the conduction, high conduction uh, band, then what you measure inside in the system is pre predominate by the, uh, by the bulk conduction band. Okay. So the next question is how you obtain the magnetic topological insulator and tune the Fermi level or chemical potential level. So in this case, you can use a very easy way and traditional way by proper. Okay, take the case here. We have a bismuth serenite RPEX data here. As you can see, we, can, we have a very clean uh, direct surface that uh, is connected by the direct point. Okay, so when you introduce the chromium into the bismuth serenite, right now, you're able to induce the gap in between the surface. Surface step. Okay. And if we further increase the con concentration of the chromium, then the, the size of the gap is increased. Okay. So this tells that the size of the gap is somewhere proportional to the concentration of your magnetic, magnetic power. Okay. So, but we also have another problem here. As you can see, the, right now, the Fermi level is increased and moved to the bulk conduction band. Okay, so as you can see, as you can see the, here, uh, the bulk valence band is moving down and the Fermi level is here. Okay, so if we use this kind of system to observe the quantum Amnus Hall effect, it's impossible. Okay, so because the bulk step is predominant, the system instead of the direct surface step. So how to solve this problem, we can use the same panel, okay? Tune the system by using another, another topics, okay? So as, you can, as we know, bismuth telluride is one, is, is a P, uh, is a M-type particular, uh, M-type semiconductor, and the antimony telluride is a P-type, okay? Semiconductor or in, particular insulator, okay? So by, by carefully adjusting the concentration of the antimony and bismuth, we can easily tune the formula, okay? 
as here, as you can see, right now the viscous telluride is close over the buck conduction bed. It's not very easy to see here, okay, but it's close over. So right now it is it's dominated by the bulk conductions. When you when you uh, continue dope with the antimony, okay, you can see that right now the direct point is moving up, means that your Fermi level is going down. Okay, so at some point around 0.94 topping rate and 0.96 topping rate, the Fermi level is about in between the gap, the surface that gap. Okay, so this is what we want. So by combining the, uh, the above, the chromium dot, uh, the, the experience from here and this guy, then we can, we can have the first quantum amount of effect. And this was observed by Dr. Uh, by Dr. Uh, Chu Chang. So what he did is he, he met the chromium dot bismuth antimony telluride timber. Okay, and then he's, he's, he's conducting the current from the edge to the other edge and measure the receptivity in uh, uh, parallel to the current, which is your longitudinal receptivity, and also measure the transverse directions. This is our, uh, our whole receptivity. Okay, so this is a, is a real picture of the, of the Kimfra. Okay. So what we ask that is when we tune the chemical potential in between the surface step, okay, then the, this is our uh, conductance with uh, whole contact, conductance which is one over the receptivity, okay. So we expect to have an e square over h value. It's a quantum <coughs> value, and the and the receptivity and the receptivity in between here, okay, on the conductance will become zero in the longitudinal direction. Okay, so the measure the system by tuning the field and uh, at different temperature, and you can see here they found that the uh, the, uh, the system is at like a phenomenatic with the transition temperature around fifteen Kelvin. Okay, in this at at uh, at below fifteen Kelvin, they observe the anomalous Hall effect. Okay. But this value is, is still not quantum yet. Okay, this is because the Fermi level, okay, is not in between the surface step. So they, they further use the gap tuning to, to tune the concentrations of the, of the electron inside the system. Okay, as you can see, when they tune, uh, the gap voltage increased to uh, set to negative 1.5 or 2.5 volts, then the system become, become quantum. Okay, equals to h over e squared at the, at the working temperature of 30 millikelvin. Okay, this is the whole voltage signal. And the signature of the, of the longitudinal uh, resistivity is become zero. Okay, in this case, you can see that the system does not exactly reach to zero. Okay, this is because the presence of the uh, localized uh, dispersive uh, ch conducting channel. Okay, however, this can be reduced when we, in, when we decrease the temperature down to absolute zero Kelvin. Okay. Okay, the next question we want to ask is why, we, why the working temperature for the quantum amount Hall effect is too low? It's about 30 million Kelvin. It's pretty low. It's hard for our daily life education. Okay, so there's a there's a research paper mentioned about that. Uh, as you can see from this STM spectra, okay, it's where STM, the scanning, scanning tunnel microscope, is very sensitive to the surface step. Okay, they found that the step, uh, the, the side of, of the gap, the surface step gap, is, is regional dependence. Okay, and they plot the, the size gap profile. The, they conclude that the average of the size gap is about 13 milli, milli electron watts. And this mapping is not homogeneity. Okay, so based on this result, they, can, they conclude that the, this is because of the random distribution of the magnetic topers 
inside the frame that cause the, the working temperature of to realize the quantum Amnes Hall effect becomes so, top, so low. Okay. So in order to solve this problem, what you need is to have a homogeneity from um, ferromagnetic firm, okay? And one of the, uh, one of the, solving, uh, the solution is by using modulations dot heterostructure, okay? In this system, what they did is that they, they use a highly doped chromium dismus antimony telluride sandwiched with the topological insulator that's tuned, okay? And then in this setting, they're able to observe the quantum Arnold's Hall effect up to one Kelvin, okay? At two Kelvin is almost there, okay? If let's say we take two Kelvin as the highest, higher temperature, we can also the quantum Arnold's Hall effect is still far away for application, okay? So in order to solve this, this problem, to have a quantum Arnold's Hall effect at high temperature, one round is to have the ideal magnetic, uh, ideal magnetic topological insulator, which is, the system is, the magnetization is intrinsic. This means that you have a stoichiometric compound with ordering arranged and a trans couple magnetic atom. Okay. This is quite different from topic. So the first uh, predicted uh, uh, intrinsic antiferromagnetic topological insulator is manganese bismuth telluride in one, two, four composition. Okay. So this is the crystal, predicted crystal structure. Okay, this uh, magnetic bismuth telluride crystalline in the in the rhombohedra uh, crystal structure with the space group of R neg R three bar n. Okay, with the space space group one hundred and sixty six. So in this system, we can see that the the tellurium uh, tellurium uh, is tellurium stacking on uh, bismuth tellurium manganese tellurium bismuth tellurium to form the set of pole layer in the C direction. Okay, this is your C direction. Going out is C direction. Okay, and, and the magnetic, uh, the, mag the manganese, sub lapis is, will, will be formed the fellow magnetisms inside the system. Okay, and those fellow, and this system is considered as an airtight, anti fellow magnetic system, because the, the one layer of the magnetic system, uh, fellow magnetic layer, is anti is uh, anti ferromagnetically step on another system, another another layer, okay, to form an anti ferromagnetic, and the predicted temperature is about twenty five four Kelvin, and due to due to the uh, due to the magnetic sub lattice that provide the magnetisms, we expect that we have a surface ferromagnetism with the crystal the system in zero zero one surface, okay, and. The non traverse surface that is formed by due to the uh, band inversion of the bismuth and tellurium in the uh, of the P bands, okay, in tau point. So this system uh, is a is an excellent platform to study the quantum to start to study the high temperature quantum Arnold's Hall effect when we have a, a odd layer system. Okay, just one layer of static layer. Okay. Why is there FM on the surface? That's they're trying to ask that question. Can you repeat again? Why is, Why is there ferromagnetism on the surface? Ferromagnetism. I don't think they quite understood. Yeah. Okay. So right now, uh, if you have if if you have an odd surface, okay, when you open it up, the surface, uh, the magnet, the magnetic moments of the magnetic system will point in one direction. Okay. Clay, when someone is clay and expose the surface, it's not magnetic layer. Instead, it's caloric layer. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry about it. Mm. Okay. So, magnetic is not right on the top. Mm. Okay, thanks, Dr. Mark. Okay. So, when, when we have an odd layer, uh, even layer, okay, then the magnetization becomes cancelled out, okay. Then we we can in this is the in this case then, then you should say if you have a odd number of layer and then mm. you would expect the time over symmetry breaking. Yeah. But for even number of layer, you don't expect that. Right? Mm. Because basically magnetic cancel out. Yes. Yeah. 
the mineralogies cancel out in, in this case, then we can realize the topological uh, ensure state with the topological magnet magnetic effect. And this is very important, okay? In the magnet uh, magnetic electric effect means that when you, in, when you provide, okay, the magnetic, uh, magnetic fields into the system, the system can provide you the electric field. Okay, or vice versa, when you provide the electric field into this system, then the system can provide you with the uh, electric field, right? Okay, and another another uh, exciting platform to, can be realized in this material is the type two magnetic well summing method step. Okay, right now already predicted this is one of the of the promising interesting topological insulator. Okay. However, in order to, to grow this system, it's quite challenging, okay? As you can see from this phase diagram, okay, the manganese bismuth terra in one, two, four compositions is an unstable phase, okay? So if we use a bismuth terra and manganese terra as our source to produce, the, to grow the manganese bismuth terra, it's hard, okay? Okay, this is because the formation energy of the bismuth terra is lower than the manganese bismuth terra. That's for when we when you grow this, this system, the MBT, as referred as a manganese bismuth terra, is easily in the growth with the bismuth terra. Okay? And beside that, the system also can easily decompose on form the bismuth terra, manganese terra, or either the manganese bismuth terra in one, six, nine compositions. Okay? And this system is also in concrete melt because of the magnetic territe have a higher temperature. And the other problem we, we, might, we, we are facing is the magnetic compound like to react with the quartz, okay? And in 2013, there's a, a Korean group successfully synthesized the polycrystal of the magnetic bismuth territe, okay? And then run the temperature, temperature dependence of the SRD measurements. As you, can, as you can see from here, at around 463 Kelvin, the system decomposed and the impurity, impurity of uh, bismuth territe and manganese territe occurred. Okay, so this, this uh, based on this information, and we also know that the bismuth territe is more stable than manganese bismuth territe, then the quenching technique must be used. Okay, this technique can be done by taking out the ampere from the high temperature furnace and drop into the, into the cold water, okay? So after some run, uh, we figure out the right, uh, the right recipe to grow this material, okay? First, what, you, what we did is we heat up the system into 100 degrees Celsius for at least 24 hours, okay? And then we slowly cool it down with the very slow red which is three degrees Celsius per hour, and then stay at 610 degrees Celsius for 40, 48 hours, okay? After the entering process, we quench the system into the, into the room temperature. So, as I mentioned, the mechanism compound like to react with the quartz. So, we need to seal our, our raw material in a carbon coated quartz. And then check it by another large, large uh, uh, evacuated quartz tip. Okay, so as you can see, we can have uh, we have the manganese bismuth territe peak in the in our SRD measurements, but they also accompany with the impurity of bismuth territe, manganese territe here, and even have an integral in between the bis uh, bismuth terra inside the manganese bismuth terra. Okay, they are in the group to each other. So, what we, in order to have, the, have a pure single crystal for manganese bismuth terra, you need to scan piece by piece. Okay, and therefore, after some time, definitely if you lack enough, maybe you can have. Okay, you need to scan, you need to patient. And then this is the single, uh, the pure manganese bismuth serenite single crystal. From the SRD spectra, you can see that uh, we have uh, the 00L peak matched well via our database, okay? <laughs> and we do, we do not have other, other impurity peak in our 
in our S SRDP, SRD star chart. Okay, we also study the crystal structure from the PEM measurements. So as you can see here, the, the PEM image here show that uh, the crystal structure is a most same like is as I agree, okay, like the predicted structure, okay. And from the electron diffraction pattern along the one zero zero zoom axis, we do not have the uh, stacking force in between our static core layer, so it's pretty nice. And here, as you can see, the from the concentration, uh, the contrast of each row, okay, we can you can say that uh, there's, there's no on very low intermixing between the bismuth and manganese, okay? And, and here, if we use either using a high, high angle annular dark field or low angle annular dark field of the uh, STEM, we can see some spot, some contrast here, okay? And if you run the spectra, Okay, the intensity as the profile, manganese profile, and the bismuth profile, we can, we can find that we do have a manganese black can see in the system. So this is one of the defect, the major defect we have. Okay, we said that this is topological insulator. Sure, we want to know the spectrum, uh, the RPEX measurements. So at room temperature, uh, when we cool down the sample, sample to 30 Kelvin, okay, we observe uh, a large surface gap here, okay? So if we increase the temperature to room temperature, we do observe the, uh, the, uh, the gap, okay? And this, these observations also observe in the first, uh, from the uh, first guy who observed this phenomenon, okay? So we, we suspect that the surface that get opening at room temperature is mostly is mostly due to the spin fluctuations. In order to do so, we, we, we measure the magnetic property and then transport property. So in magnetic property measurements, we, we apply the zero field cool and field cool measurements. Okay, zero field cool measurements means you put your sample inside the, inside the chamber and cool it down to, room to, to lowest temperature and then turn on the field and measure the, the magnetizations. okay, in the warming track. Okay, for so field cool means you turn off the field when you cool down the sample, okay, and measure it. So in this case, we can, we can see that the magnetic moment, moment of the system is trying to align to each other, okay, either in zero field cool or zero field cool for both directions, okay, that they are, the magnetic moment try to align, and then at, at the temperature of 25 Kelvin in the zero field cool, okay, at, at the direction of H parallel to C, you can see that it's going down, okay? Means that we have a fellow magnetism, uh, anti magnetism, okay? And this temperature is considered as, a, as our uh, new temperature, which is around 25 Kelvin, and the ground state is anti magnetic. And we, we also fix our data using a QR-wise feeding, okay? And we found that the, the light is, is intercept, okay? The, Pure wise temperature is about five Kelvin. Okay, this might suggest that we have a strong, strong fellow magnetic fluctuations, and this can break the tie versus symmetry. Okay, and we also uh, the collaborator from NIST nice, they run the measurements, uh, they run the neutron scattering measurements. Your statement is not right. Mm. That pure temperature meaning that you have uh, both anti from inner layer and from a coupling and intra layer thermal coupling, so that positive. Uh, wise temperature indicating you know the, the energy scale of internal layer thermal coupling is stronger mm -hmm. of, of, of fluctuation. Okay, from the new from measurements, uh, based on the data, the the transition temperature at 20, 22 Kelvin is quite agreed with our, with our oscillations, and they also found that uh, the crystal structure is quite agreed with the anti magnetic structure. Okay, so when we run the magnetization as a function of the field, okay, you can see that uh, we have a, when, when we measure for the field hatch par parallel to the C directions, there's a, there's a spring fault 
at about 3.57 Tesla. Okay, and however, in the direction of H perpendicular to the C directions, the magnetizations of the system is increased linear. Okay, this tells us that we have a CS, tells us that the CS is our easy axis. It's an anisotropic magnetic system. And we did not see or serve any hysteresis loop around the spin for that, uh, spin for, uh, field, okay? And, uh, and the other important things uh, we need to, I need to grab your attention is, as you can see, when we, when we measure up to five Tesla in this system, this, the magnetization does not uh, saturate, okay? Because we have a magnet inside the system, we expect that to have the effective moment around five uh, magneto volt resistor. Okay, so this is not the case. So in order to understand this, we, we run the top measurements to very high thing. Okay, up to, up to uh, in this case, I showed up to 12.5. Okay, as you can see, we have a transitions ar around, uh, the red color is our top uh, measurements. You can see that there's a transitions around 7.7 .7 Tesla, okay? This implies that we have a three distinct, uh, phenomen uh, three distinct magnetic system in, our, in this material. First, we have an anti-phenomenetic, means that the, the magnetic moments is anti-parallel in the C-axis, and we, are, we do have the cantered anti-phenomenetic, okay? Means that one of the magnetic moments is not linear, linear uh, <coughs> Is, is non collinear with the upper one. And in the ferromagnetisms, the, they are all collinear co uh, co to each other. But when we apply, when we do the same thing, but we change the directions, okay, where the, right now the field is perpendicular to C. As you can see that we, the anti ferromagnetic of the system is virtually changed to the ferromagnetism. Okay. Okay. Then we start to run the transport property to indicate, uh, to try to spot the 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 spin fluctuations. Okay. So from from here, as you can see, when we quit down the system from one hundred k down to forty k, the system act like a metallic behavior. Okay. When the system close to the to the new temperature the magnetic moments try to align to each other, that's the, you have a, have a peak here, and then drop, okay? However, when we, kick, when we increase the, measure, uh, the magnetic field inside our measurements, then those peaks disappear, okay? This suggests that we have a, we have a, uh, we have a strong spin scattering inside our system that interact with the, with the, with the spin. The so, so Sam, so Sam, this is Ying. Uh, why why is the resistivity so low? Is that because you have surface states, or because the bulk is 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 not very insulating? Yeah. Uh, but to answer the questions, we can go back to the to this to the RPS data. As you can see, the Fermi level is close over the bulk conduction band. Okay, that's why uh, the that's why we, we have a very low visibility. It's very conductive. Both is conductive. Yeah, both is conduct conductive. <coughs> yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, here. Okay. This is why we have a very low conductivity uh, visibility. Okay. And then is a surface is a surface state gapped. Yeah, surface state is gap. Yeah, surface state is gap. But yeah. what we measure is the bulk is, transport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the surface state make trivial contribution yeah. to the uh, to uh, to the transport. Mm -hmm. Okay, just because of the the size of the crystal. Right, it's mm -hmm. probably one measure measuring bulk crystal. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this iron such a piece is still pretty good, right? Thirty something. I know. The, uh, yes, uh, between uh, Ying Plane and all yeah, of right? yes. it's about, uh, about 30, you're right. Yeah. Okay. It's a moderate. Right. 
Okay, so this data clearly suggests uh, you know the spin causes uh, uh, sc additional scattering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, for for the measurements on the ZZ directions here, we also the similar thing. Okay. So because of the time constraint, I will go more faster. Okay. We also measure the the uh, the resistivity as a function of the magnetic field, which is a magnetic resistor. In this case, you can see that when you, when the field is increased, okay, the resistivity value is suppressed, okay, it's reduced. This means that the spin scattering is, is suppressed, okay, it's, 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 uh, it's agree well with our previous observation, okay. But uh, at the field, uh, for the case where, uh, in another direction, we also observe the same thing, okay. Okay, first, and then we also me we measure the resistivity, uh, the whole resistivity as a function of the field. Okay, in this case, when the temperature above the above the nail temperature, what we have is a linear line. Okay, so nothing special. Based on this line, negative load means tell us that we have an M type career career, which is uh, which is agree well with our apex measurements. Okay, is the Fermi level close over the bulk conditions that. Okay, and then the current density is in the order of 20. It's four in between the business terabyte metric. Okay, and in this case, by using the, the current density and the receptivity measurements, okay, we're able to, to deduce the mobility of the system. And we found that it's quite low. Okay, it's about 80 something. Okay, centimeter squared per watt, centi watt second. Okay, this is one of the of a major consequence due to the presence of the spin scattering in the transport measure. Okay. And if it if it cooling down, okay, measure the whole resistivity at very low temperature, then we start to observe the hub here. This is considered as an anonymous hot hole effect. And and this uh this is the 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 uh hole effect can be contributed by three component, major component, which is due to the uh, normal Hall effect and the Amos Hall effect that coupling to the magnetizations. And the other ones is uh, due to the spin texture, okay, induced by the mid very uh, very curvature in the uh, in in the momentum space. So in order to, to carry or serve those intrinsic Amos Hall effect, we need to remove the normal Hall effect, okay? <coughs> so after we remove the Hall effect, this, the, the pump, the hump is, right now it's become pump, okay, because we introduced a negative sign, okay? The right now is more carry, okay? So this, uh, this the, the, uh, the difference here is become uh, contributed by, by the anonymous Hall effect that coupling to the magnetizations and also the spin texture, okay? To further observe whether whether the Amos Hall effect is due to the spin texture, then we report the graph, okay, from as a function uh the delta rho s y, uh, is from here, the delta rho s y as a function of the magnetic field, ah, the magnetization, okay, this magnetizations can is uh is is measured from our magnetization uh the squid measurements, so at this. At this uh, picture, we can clearly see that if if the Amman Hall effect is coupling to the magnetizations, what we expect is to have a linear line. Okay, but in this case, no. We observe a huge bump here. It's about six point seven micro ohm centimeter. It's very big, and we and this uh, and this increases Amman Hall effect is uh, is due to is due to the uh, need very curvature in the momentum space, okay? Because we have a we have a symmetric bracket and a strong spin operating coupling in our system. Okay, as a conclusion, uh, we observe the spin scattering in both the anti phenomenality state and uh, and also in the temperature beyond above the new temperature, and we also observe. Uh, the spin, we believe that the spring fluctuations is response to the gap opening of the surface that above the new temperature. And 
We also here observe the cantor antiferromagnetic state, and in this state, we observe the intrinsic Alamos Hall effect that not coupling to the to the magnetizations, and it's due to the net very curvature in the momentum state. Okay, and uh, theory predicted that this system can also have the can also have the it's also have it's also a type two magnetic Gaussian matter, but in our measurement, we did not observe the chiral anomaly. This is one of the critical feature. Okay. And we it's maybe due to the well not is far away from the formula. Okay. So in order to observe the high high temperature quantum Amman's Hall effect, we need to we need to reduce from three dimensions to two dimensions and further tune the formula into the surface law. Okay, if you are interested in, in this, uh, this material, you can read uh, the, our preprint manuscript at archive. And I also acknowledge our, our curator. Okay, uh, thanks for Totem uh, advice for this project and other curator and the financial support. Okay, thank you. So we have a few questions online and we're queued up in the middle. Um, I don't know how that person got through, but they got through. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for your questions during the live session. Um, so, uh, just for the people online, just so you know, that these uh, sessions are recorded. Hopefully, the second recording went pretty well. Um, we also provide a PDF of the PowerPoint, so you can look at it online. Those are usually posted within two or three weeks, uh, so you'll be able to see it in perpetuity. So, um, Sam, so one of the questions was, I think we need to go back to the ferromagnetism, um, right around slide 15, yes. I think it was. I think the question was related to, there was some confusion about the depth of ferromagnetism, whether it's on the surface or at what depth in the material um, is it actually occurring. I think I think that section was the most confusing. So maybe we could work that a little bit. Yes. Show the main structure. Yeah, exactly. So this, so a type antiferrum order. What it means is within layer, within magnetic layer, is the uh, ferromagnetic order between layer is antiferromagnetic couple, right? Uh, so if you reduce uh, three dimensional crystal to uh, uh, a few layer of flake, uh, if you have even number of uh, magnetic layer, so you can imagine uh, the magnetization would be canceled out. Right, so in that case, the time reversal symmetry breaking is minimized, right? But however, if you have an odd number of layer, for example, five layer or tri layer, uh, so you have one layer which cannot be uh, cancelled out, right? So that could cause uh, residual magnetization and uh, uh, further cause uh, time reversal symmetry breaking up. So quantum normal hall effect. Uh, is expected for odd number of layer, uh, including uh, five layer or seven layer. Paul, well, we should be able to hear you. Do you want to? Do you have any uh, follow up on that? Uh, no, I was just just wondering, like for for the bulk crystal. Huh? Say that again, please. Uh, I was just wondering, like about the bulk. Or like a single crystal rather than like just a single uh, septuple layer. So instead of the bulk properties, like a. Yeah, this is also the spot here, uh, a property of bulk single crystal. Uh, so we have not reached uh, uh, none of like few layer of lake. Uh. Yeah, all data presented here. Our data uh, collected on bulk single crystal sample at the bulk level. Okay. Yes, bulk level. Okay. Um, may I may I actually ask a question? This is Yin again. So, if you were to reduce in two dimension in order to see quantum anomalous Hall effect, then do you expect the magnetization will also reduce as you reduce the thickness? Maybe by the one layer, you don't have a implant or intraplane ferromagnetism anymore. Do you know? Do you know the surface layer is actually ferromagnetic? And where is the cliff, cliff plane? Yes. Um, 
on a normal hole, actually, it's not expected for uh, monolayer. So th they have been very detailed theoretical calculation. So reporting a couple of papers. So the prediction is the following. So the quantum normal hole is expected in five layer, seven layers, uh, flake. If you get to uh, uh, flake with even number of uh, manganese layer, like uh, four layer, two layer, or six layer, you will observe uh, uh, axon insulated state. Uh, so I already forgot that the prediction for monolayer. There's something else that mon monolayer doesn't show the either of the state. Uh, then if you were to go to five layer, let's talk about five layer. The five layer is quantum overhaul. Yeah, is the gap reduced? Uh, the, five layer? the surface gap still uh, still remain. Uh, the gap is uh, predicted to be about uh, 90 MeV uh, below near temperature. Okay. But uh, what we observe, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the gap uh, is even present uh, well above near temperature, even at the room temperature. Uh. So our interpretation for that is that uh, uh, the strong spin fluctuation uh, causing gap opening at the temperature, well near temperature, uh, well above near temperature. Uh, because interlayer ferromagnetic coupling is very strong here, uh, even though interlayer antiferromagnetic coupling is weak, order temperature is just 25 Kelvin, but interlayer is very strong. So from transport measurement, we have already seen evidence of uh, spin scattering. Uh, Right, even above near temperature, that meaning uh, normal state above near temperature, we do have strong spin fluctuation. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Th th thank you, Ying. Uh, we have another question online. Uh, I think they've asked this a couple of times. So, um, what is the formation energy difference between a bismuth telluride, for example? And this material. This okay. Material. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let yeah. me answer that question. Now I'm uh, collaborating a, a theorist at the Tulane to solve this problem. Now. So first of all, I want to tell you this ternary phase, manganese bismuth telluride, is metastable stable phase. Uh, the formation energy of this ternary phase uh, is less than the formation energy of bismuth telluride and the manganese telluride. Uh, all together, uh, less than that, only at high temperature. From our uh, preliminary calculation, uh, so the low energy of the ternary phase only happens at uh, temperature around 700, uh, 700 degrees C. Uh. So it's pretty close to our observation. Uh. You know, to achieve this phase, we have to quench our material uh, around, uh, around 650 uh, degrees C. Uh. So now theory calculation, yeah, uh, predicted that it should be around there. Uh, it's a, the difference is actually it's not that small around uh, 700 degrees C. Uh, it's, how do you, you need to remember how, how much is the difference, the forma formation energy difference? Not very large, uh, not very large in a uh, few 10 uh, MeV, uh, yes. I think you answered their question. They said thank you. Anybody here in the room have questions? A little patient here waiting. Anyone want to pick at this a little bit? Um, I did see something mentioned in the chat that uh, I don't know if you're aware of, Sam and uh, Dr. Mao. Um, somebody had mentioned that there's another AFM TI published in the New Journal of Physics by Joe Hagman, uh, bismuth manganese selenide. Bismuth manganese selenide. So bismuth BI2. manganese selenide. Yeah, so basically selenide instead of telluride. It's um, manganese doped bismuth telluride? Or uh, they just mentioned it, it might be something you might want to have. Oh, okay, you should uh, look into it. I think it's been really recent as well. Oh, okay, so yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, this material fat belongs to this material fat or, or just the manganese doped bismuth telluride? Oh, no, it, they, they write it as bismuth. Oh, bismuth. I know. Selenide. Yeah, that's the yeah. prediction. Yeah. Prediction. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, prediction. Okay. That phase cannot be synthesized. We already tried. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So that's, that's a prediction. Not the, it's not the dopey case. No, 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 no. It's a uh, manganese bismuth selenide, one, two, four. It's a serial prediction. Um, he said it was published in 2017. 2017. Yes. I think you should look into it as well. Yeah, we should look into it. It's, a, it's, a, I, well, it's probably saying as the paper puts it on archive, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I read that paper. I guess it's that big, but this should be published in 2018, not 70. Well, okay. yeah, look into it. Yeah, we should look in it. Yeah, look in, look. I said you should look in. They gave me the article. Okay, yeah, look into it to see if it's relevant. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. anything else here? Um, if not, we'll go ahead and close this webinar down. Thank you for coming and thank you for being patient. Apparently our system was um, in a death loop between two different computers. So anyway, thank you so much. Okay.